Uh, one of the companies we partner with to help make a selection of the best new startup that we're going to feature here on Valley, v Valley View is a company called Dealmaker Media. Dealmaker Media puts on a really great conference called Under the Radar. Fritz and I are the MCs of that event. It's taking place in the next two days. It'll be happening down in Silicon Valley. And here to tell us a little bit about the event is the director of Dealmaker Media, Heidi Isern, and she will also select the startup that we're going to feature here on Valley View. Heidi? Great. Thanks, David. As David mentioned, we are the producers of the Under the Radar Conference that is kicking off tomorrow. We're going to have 32 disruptive startups pitch their technologies to enterprise executives. We'd love to see you guys there. So if you go to our website, undertheradar.com, and register using the code VVIEW, you will get $100 off the registration price. One of the companies that we're pleased to have on our stage is called Datasift. Datasift is in our big data category. Now, Fritz was talking quite a bit about Datasift before. Um, however, one line that he forgot to mention about big data was it's not the size of the data, but what you do with it. Datasift actually helps companies do something with their data by leveraging multiple social media streams and bringing them all into one platform. We have the CEO, Rob Bailey, here from Datasift to talk a little bit more about what their company does. Fritz and David, take it away. Hey, Rob, thanks for joining us here on Information Week's Valley View. Great to have you. Nice to be here. I, I do like big data, by the way. Yeah. That's okay. Well, I, I hope that a lot of people like big data. Okay, good. I just want to dive I right in. you might be mad at me. Rob, yeah. I want to dive right in here because uh, a lot of times when people are trying to figure out what a company does, they go to where? The website, right? Yeah. And they read through the copy on the website and try to make, a, make some sort of determination of whether the company is providing a, a solution that will be relevant to them. I'd like to read you some text from your own website, <laughs> from your web page, and, uh, and, and, and uh, maybe we can start the conversation off this way. Uh, so, Datasift offers the most powerful and sophisticated tools for extracting value from social data. The amount of content that, the, that Internet users are creating and sharing through social media is exploding. Datasift offers the best tools for collecting, filtering, and analyzing this data. So then on another page, it, that's, those are the ends, <laughs> all of the, the, the social network data that goes in. You have something called reporting. Datasift collects and presents real-time and historical usage data at the macro level of the cloud as well as the micro level of API calls. Root cause analyses of degradations of performance and utilization enable developers and their customers to troubleshoot your applications. Rob, who writes this stuff <laughs> and what does it mean because I haven't been able to make any sense of this, this copy? Great. Well, the good news is uh, you're probably not our core target customer. Uh, our core target customer typically is a relatively technical person that's typically a decision maker at a social media monitoring company, a business intelligence company, possibly a news organization or a mm -hmm. finance organization. They usually have a fair amount of experience in working with big data and working with different APIs. So really the messaging that we put on our website is uh, very targeted at them. Okay. Um, so they tend to be highly technical, and a lot of what was in the different segments of the text that, we, that you covered, especially the reporting, is really messaged specifically to questions that we typically get asked during customer meetings. Okay, so who do they work for, and then of what value to those companies is the solution that you're providing? What's the end game for them? Sure. So typically uh, the sales process in an organization, and it depends, typically the, our, our buyer might be a CIO or a CTO. Mm -hmm. So it's an executive level decision maker, possibly a founder or a CEO as well in smaller companies. Uh, they typically are senior on the executive team but have a fair amount of technical background. Um, and usually, obviously, they will typically work for a CEO, for example. Mm -hmm. So the business side of an organization will typically go to the technical side with business-related challenges like we need to monitor social data or we need to monitor most social data sources. And then it's usually incumbent on the CIO or the CTO and their team to evaluate a lot of different options uh, for how to do that. And we're going to get into a demo of Datasift in a second. But one thing I want to understand is you, there are a lot of companies that get at social data. How do you get at it differently or better? So it's an exploding space, uh, and it's also uh, very new. So I think a lot of companies are still trying to figure out exactly what they do. For us, specifically, uh, we focus on solving what we think is probably the hardest problem right now in 
big data and specifically uh, the big data that's being created from different social networks. And that's really around ingesting all of this data, managing it, and actually trying to derive value from it. So we ingest massive quantities of data from all these different social networks. Uh, we clean it, we normalize it, we pull in a linked content from other sources, and then provide that back out uh, to our customers in an easy to use API format with a bunch of different filters to derive more meaning from the data. Okay, let's take a look at it. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you guys, okay. Um, so the first thing is obviously we'll start off with our website. So this is the website which you talked about mm -hmm. with the copy that you really it's love. It's on the home page. That's Excellent. Right. Um, so you would log in and um, essentially um, what I'm going to do is take you guys to the core of what the DataSift product and service really is. So we ingest all of this data, clean it, normalize it. We do things like uh, pull in all the content that are from associated links. So something like one in five uh, tweets now on Twitter uh, actually contains a link to an article somewhere else on the internet. And when you think of the fact that Twitter actually produces something like 300 to 330 million tweets a day, that's a lot of linked content that you really need to bring in to get a complete picture of what's going on. Um, so we will pull in those links or pull in the content for those links. And what you do is you actually create filters um, that enable you to specifically in this sort of flood of information pull out exactly what you're looking for. So this would be a company that wants to understand, say, what people are saying about it or what particular yeah. trends are, but they have a very finite, they want to take a very finite view of that data. They don't just want to say, tell me everything happening about Coca-Cola. Yeah, that would probably be kind of overwhelming. Uh, we're, we're actually finding that uh, the sophistication in corporate America and among social media monitoring companies is, is just accelerating at an incredible rate right now. And whereas a year or two or three years ago, uh, companies were just doing basic uh, keyword searches, so someone might have in the past looked for Coca-Cola. We're now finding that uh, the kind of queries that are happening are things like, tell me everything about Coca-Cola that was positive, that was tweeted by people with a high cloud score in New York um, on Tuesday night. Um, or tell me what uh, everybody said about the Coca-Cola commercial during the Super Bowl. Right. So we're finding that people are doing very precise searches so that they can drive meaning more quickly. So we look at a lot of the, what we call time to insight. And so we help our customers uh, by accelerating their time to insight. So now looking at the demo here, you have Apple negative. Yep. And so it sounds sure. like a lot of sentiment analysis going on. Is that the primary usage or, you know, other, yeah. That's, that's probably one of the most popular ones. Right. So there's a massive quantity of data being produced in social. And what we find is probably one of the first things that people want to see is, is it positive or negative? And by looking at all of the content being produced on social, you can, and doing a cut by positive or negative, you can draw some very interesting conclusions, especially when you overlay that with business events. So for example, if you were an investor in Apple, you could take a look at the sentiment uh, of tweets, positive and negative, and derive some conclusion about what the market thought about it. Now before we got on the air, Apple announced its earnings. Yes. And in about five minutes, you set up this feed. Yep. Maybe less than five minutes seem like five minutes and this is the Apple negative feed correct correct so we are I mean as I said right now our customers are, are relatively technical um, so we have a language and I'll, I'll show you a little bit about what this looks like so that is just a few lines of code that have actually created the feed so it's sort of like if you've ever coded in HTML or another language like that it's uh, about that level of complexity um, we actually, we have a, a very uh, active client services team that can actually create these filters for our customers. And so what we find a lot of times will happen with our customers, whether it's social media monitoring companies, business intelligence companies, news organizations, or in some cases financial institutions, um, they will typically have a technical team which work with our client services team to actually create these filters. And it's, it's really amazing what you can do. What we're finding is that um, Typically, the business wants to ask very sophisticated questions. And in the past, with the technology that was available, you're only able to answer really, red, give rudimentary answers. So someone might say, how did people like my ad? And the answer might be, well, you got a lot of tweets. And now we could actually help our customers provide much more sophisticated answers like, well, as it turns out, men like your ad more than women. Women, especially women with the high cloud score, really didn't like your ad. And when women were tweeting negatively about your ad, the reason why they were tweeting negatively about the ad is because 
um, they thought that the quality of the dialogue in the commercial was bad. Now you, you provide, we were watching you providing like a real time feed coming through, so you were sifting yep. through everything that was happening, all the events that are happening out there on Twitter, I'm assuming Facebook yep. as well. Uh, yes, we're just starting to work with Facebook now. Um, Facebook's a, it's a very different animal because Twitter and, uh, Twitter and Facebook are fundamentally very different social networks. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a great illustration of why it's so important to work with a platform provider like us that really understand the different nature of these different social networks. So Twitter is all about, I think of it as almost kind of a yelling out to the world, or maybe not yelling, but definitely broadcasting out to the world your points of view about certain things. And I think generally when we've interacted with Twitter users, there is a slightly lower expectation of privacy. Mm -hmm. People still don't want to be spammed to. They don't want their data being used for bad purposes. But um, it, inherent in the communication is, for example, I have close to 10,000 followers. When I, twit, when I tweet something out on Twitter, I'm expecting that is something that's accessible by 10,000 people. Um, so I'll typically tweet out things like a newspaper article or something that's going, you know, another great success from Data Sift or something like that. Facebook's a little bit different. Um, what we found is that a lot of the nature of the sharing on Facebook tends to be more personal. So personal family pictures, maybe comments between family members. And as such, I think, frankly, there's a higher expectation of privacy um, that people have uh, on Facebook versus Twitter. Uh, and so we are definitely very respectful of that. Mm -hmm. We're always respectful of user privacy, but I think definitely, in particular, the different expectations people have. Well, where, where I was going with that question was uh, you were talking about how you can identify that uh, well, this number of women said something positive about this versus the ones who said something yeah. negative. But you were showing a feed where you can kind of see the whole thing go by. Do you actually pr roll up the data into something meaningful? So let's say I set up two or three of those windows. One's yeah. looking at negative, one's looking at positive, and then off of that we can do some sort of totaling and build a pie chart and say, well, here's some the whole kind of population. Right. Of the data. So do you yeah. do that as well, or is that up to the developer or the technical person who knows how to work data sift in the organization to extract that and summarize it in, in a meaningful fashion? There's about three great questions in there, and I'm going to okay. try to get to all of them. So uh, in terms of the analytics, um, you mentioned, you read some copy off our website, the analytics that we're being referred to are just specifically about the performance of our API. Mm -hmm. uh, we are absolutely not an analytics company. There's, uh, it's a really tough uh, business to be in. You have to be really good at what you do. We actually have a lot of great customers, like a NetPace, for example, one of the top social media monitoring companies that are incredibly good at the application layer. We are a platform company. We're really good at managing uh, large amounts of big data and mapping them together. Mm -hmm. uh, you gave specifically the example of you know, some tweets going by. So in the case of Twitter, it's a lot easier to aggregate data and, for example, to look at competitive data. Um, in the case of Facebook, um, I think really the sharing tends to be a lot more focused specifically around companies' own um, fan pages. Mm -hmm. So Coca-Cola would want to, in a kind of a, a platform way, access all of the content that people have put up on their various fan pages around the world and derive sentiment. Um, but usually there's a login, there's private admin uh, accounts and things like that to be able to access all the data. So there's a much higher expectation of privacy that we are absolutely respectful of. In the case of Twitter, for example, if you're an employee from Coca-Cola, you could obviously go take a look and see what people are tweeting about on the Pepsi page. So there's a slightly lower expectation of privacy and therefore there's more sharing of data involved. Great. Well, I think uh, we're, we're out of time and uh, you can definitely check Data Sift out uh, on their website or also at uh, Under the Radar later this week. That's right. Be, you'll be at the conference in a couple days? We are honored to be a presenter at Under the Radar, and uh, we're really looking forward to All it. All right. We'll see you there. Uh, we'd also like to present you with an official Information Week Valley View mug. Uh, awesome. Just about everybody who gets on the show gets a <laughs> mug. So uh, if you want to get on the show, you got to... You got to get. If you want to get the mug, you got to get on the show. So uh, for those of you who want to get on the show, you have to pitch me or Fritz through Twitter, D Berlin or F Nelson. Rob, thanks very much for joining us. It's an honor to be here. Okay. Thank you.